we'll be doing some more linear algebra today. In particular, we'll be talking about matrix factorization and how to do that in parallel using OpenMP. There are many different factorizations that you can do for a matrix. We'll be picking the most simple one, which is called the LU factorization. Okay, so what happens in the LU factorization? So you have a matrix A and you factorize it into two matrices L and U, where A is a full matrix, right? L is a lower triangular matrix and U is an upper triangular matrix. So in general you can factorize any M cross N matrix this way, but for ease of exposition I will just be talking about a simple n cross n factorization. Okay, so, we will consider A to be n cross n. All right. So, why do we do LU factorization? So, one use of the LU factorization is that if you have to solve a system of equations Ax equal to b, right? what you can do is you can factorize A into LU. So, this becomes LU x equal to b. Now, what is x? x can be computed as follows. So, what is ux? ux is a vector. u is a matrix, x is a vector. So, matrix vector product is a vector. So, call this x prime. So, this is nothing but Lx prime equal to b. So, you can solve this. Why? Because this is a lower triangular matrix times a vector x prime equal to a vector b. Right? This is easy to solve. Back substitution you can straight away read off the value of x1 prime using these values. So, we will see an example soon. right? So, you can do this using back substitution and you get the value of x prime. right? And once you have the value of x prime, now you know that ux was equal to x prime. So, now again what is u? u is an upper triangular matrix multiplied by a vector equal to, so this is x prime, you already know x prime, you know u, so you solve for x again using back substitution. So, this is actually an operation which in linear algebra is referred to as TRSV or triangular solve with a vector. Solve for a set of variables with a triangular matrix where the right hand side is a vector. So, this is also TRSV just that instead of a lower triangular you have an upper triangular matrix. Right? So, TRSV is the name of this routine in, most, in, in the most common libraries. Uh, so, the most common library is BLAS, okay? basically linear algebra subroutines, which you will find uh, easily on the net. Okay? So, that is the name given to this particular routine. How do you factorize A into LU? How do you get LU out of A? So, this is done using Gaussian elimination. Right? Something all of you must have done at some point or the other. So, what we will do is we will quickly walk through a small example and see how this is solved and then we are going to talk about how to implement that efficiently using blocks. Right? You want an efficient implementation and also how can you parallelize it using OpenMP. Okay? Let us start with the basics. Right? So, I am going to consider a simple set of equations. So, let us say that you are given a system x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equal to 14, 3x1 plus x2 plus 4x3 equal to 17 and 5x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 equal to 14. So, what do we do? We write it in the form Ax equal to b and here what is A? A is the matrix 1, 2, 3 that is the coefficients 3, 1, 4, 5, 3, 1, right. x is of course your variables x1, x2, x3, right. And what is b? b is the right hand side which is 14, 17, 14, right. It is clear that Ax is equal to b is what this system represents. So, now what I want is the LU decomposition of A, right. So, let me forget about X and B for the time being and let me just concentrate on A and I want to factorize it. 
so i can write a as right i am just multiplying by the identity matrix that doesn't change anything so slowly what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert this matrix into l and i'm going to convert this matrix into u right i mean this is standard stuff you've seen all this before just i'm rewriting it in the form of matrices and i just want you to you know be familiar with this so that you remember what this used to be so that we can talk about parallelism right okay so how do i convert this into an upper triangular matrix so gaussian elimination so what do i do the very first thing i do is i say r2 goes to r2 minus 3 r1 right and r3 goes to r3 minus 5 r1 right what happens as a result of this let me write the right hand side first the first row remains the same right row 2 becomes so this will become zero right what will happen to this entry r2 goes to r2 minus 3 r1 so 1 minus 6 this will become minus 5 right and 4 minus 3 times 3 4 minus 9 minus 5 okay now let's look at r3 r3 goes to r3 minus 5 r1 so this becomes zero again that was my intention i wanted to make the first column zero below the first entry right what happens second entry 3 minus 5 times 2 3 minus 10 that's minus 7 and 1 minus 5 times 3 Minus fourteen. So how do I capture this? So what multiplied by this matrix will give me a back? Here's what you have to understand, right? So suppose I write one zero zero over here. So what is the output matrix going to be when I multiply this with this matrix? I mean, I haven't written out the complete left-hand side matrix, but I've just written a part of it. But what do I get on the right-hand side when I multiply this? First row, right? And it is untouched. That's what this row is saying. That take the first row of the right matrix, right? Add to it zero times the second row. Add to it zero times the third row. So what happens when you multiply this with the first column? right the first entry gets multiplied by the first row entry the second entry gets multiplied by the second row entry so that is the scaling factor of the second row entry and the third element gets multiplied by the third row entry so that's the scaling factor of the third row entry and you multiply this first row with every column of the right hand side producing the first row of the resultant matrix right so i hope that interpretation is clear all right so now tell me what will be the second row so what did i do to get to this matrix R two goes to R two minus three R one. So what do I do to the second entry so that I get back a three one zero exactly, right? So what did I do? I said R two minus three R one. R two goes to R two minus three R one. So if I want to go back to a, what do I have to do? I have to say R two goes to R two plus three R one. So if I say R two goes to R two plus three R one, that's what this second row is saying now, right? The second row is saying R two goes to R two plus three R one. All right, and what will this entry become? Five zero one. Clear? And as you can see, right, every time I'm going to operate on some row, and I'm only going to subtract or add to it some factor of some earlier row. Right? That's what I do in Gaussian elimination. therefore this left hand side matrix is going to be lower triangular so what do i do next so now i want to make this entry zero right so how do i do that so i'm going to say r3 goes to r3 minus 7 by 5 times r2 I just look at the coefficient here. I look at the coefficient at the diagonal entry, and I subtract right by the factor. 
so what am I going to get now? So let me write this matrix later, but let me do this. So 1, 2, 3, the first row remains untouched, second row remains untouched, and what happens to the third row? This becomes 0, this becomes 0, and what happens to this entry? R3 goes to R3 minus 7 by 5 R2, so minus 14 plus 5 and 5 will cancel, plus 7, right? So minus 7, okay? And what happens to the left hand side matrix? So this remains untouched, this remains untouched and now I have done the operation R3 goes to R3 minus 7 by 5 R2. To get back I will have to say R3 goes to R3 plus 7 by 5 R2. So spend some time with this at home, right? you will become familiar with it, it is not difficult. So you can multiply these and check it out. So this is the LU factorization, right? This is your L and this is your U, okay? If I am trying to use this LU factorization to solve a system of equations like what I had in this example, how would I do that? So as I said, right? So this LU times X is equal to B, AX is equal to B, that's where I started. So I'm going to take UX to be X prime for the time being, right? So LX prime equal to B, what does that mean? That means that 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 5, 7 by 5, 1 times x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime, that is what x prime is, is equal to 14, 17, 14. So how do I solve this? So x1 prime straight away I can read it out, right? So 1 times x1 prime is equal to 14. This is back substitution. So x1 prime is equal to 14. What about x2 prime? So 3 times x1 prime plus 1 times x2 prime is equal to 17. So what does that mean? 3 times 14 plus x2 prime is equal to 17 or x2 prime is equal to 17 minus 42 which is minus 25. And finally, you substitute x1 prime and x2 prime in the last equality and what do you get? 5 times 14 plus 7 by 5 times minus 25 plus x3 prime is equal to 14. What does this imply? This implies that x3 prime is equal to 14 minus 70 plus 35 minus 21 yeah okay so now I have got my x1 prime x2 prime x3 prime so I have got my x prime and now I solve for x right so I can say ux is equal to x prime so what is u u is 1 2 3 0 minus 5 minus 5 0, 0, minus 7, right? This times x1, x2, x3 is equal to 14 minus 25 minus 21, okay? So what does this give me? Minus 7 x3 is equal to minus 21. So x3 is equal to 3. What does the second equation give me? Minus 5 x2 minus 5x3, that is minus 15 is equal to minus 25, right? So that gives me x2 is equal to, so this will become minus 10, minus 5x2 is equal to minus 10 or x2 is equal to 2, okay? And finally, x1 plus 2x2, so that is 2 into 2 plus 3x3 that is 3 into 3 is equal to 14 and this implies that x1 is equal to 9 plus 4, 13, 14 minus 13, 1, alright? So this is your back substitution.